Jackson's name should be it is insane out here, guys. Max Jenke, professional snowboarder. We're gonna get killed tomorrow. Stay tuned, guys. It's gonna be insane. Hey, I'm Jimmy Jackson with ATV. How you guys doing? Today we're on location at Oregon at unbelievable Mount Hood, and we are getting dumped on today. How much snow do you think we have right now? At least six inches. At least six. six, six more than that. Foot. Six inches. I'm saying like maybe I'm gonna add my element, but I'm thinking got like I don't know six, seven feet maybe. At, at least if, <laughs> if the explorers getting stuck, yeah. you know yeah. we're in enough snow. Let me introduce you to Max Jenke, new upcoming Canadian superstar. Uh, Max, say hello to everyone out there. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Hey, don't worry, I'll, we'll take care of you on the mountain. Oh, uh, nice, dude. Nice. Let's walk. That's all that. You're talking about before. Yeah, I didn't quite catch it. So. It's the cats. You gotta watch yeah. out for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like you know, this east west coast wrap and stuff. Uh -huh. We got the northwest snowboarding clique called the Wildcats. So what's the difference between the Wildcats and Little Bastards? What's going on with that? Little Bastards is our movie. I was watching one with you, and you're like. <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're sitting there. You're running like these, running down the street in <laughs> underwear, and I'm like, what's going on? There's like a the Port Explorer, like a couple guys, yeah, there, like calling you down. <laughs> and like, oh, oh, there's Max. I'm like, what is going on, dude? Like you're totally like in your body, yeah. like, running down the street over a bridge. <laughs> what what is this video all about? The things and, you do for snowboarding. Like, yeah, I know. I can't even believe it myself. It was for a movie called uh, Momentum from Adventure Scope Films yeah. in Canada. Yeah. And uh, the idea was it was going to be a movie full of skits, but I guess some people backed out on them. So mine was the only skit that actually stuck. Well, I'm charged for tomorrow, man. I'm looking for a good day. I hope the snow will die down just a bit so I can see. <laughs> like 15 feet in front of me, so I know like, yeah. where to turn the trees like head my I way. I hear you. Right I hear you. And, uh, well, I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah. It'll be, I'll, I'll feel bad if you get hurt. <laughs> you get so alive. Right on, dude. All right, man. Tomorrow, right? All right. Cool. Peace. I'm flying up against the forces. Hold me down The stones will fall and turn to pieces Without a sound The stratosphere breaks Believe beyond your telescopic reach I think it's time we have a relocation 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 It's going down The current sweep will in hood meadows. <laughs> It was on my first run. But I'm getting the hang of it. Max helped me out a little bit as far as over my edges and everything. And uh, what he did is actually he kind of compared to surfing a little bit for me, so I was able to pick it up a lot easier than I think most people would. And of course, the conditions are out of control right now, so even an idiot can pick this up today. Just launched out in the air, cleared about 10 to 12 feet over this huge deadlift. 
the 360 in the air, as you guys can see, is super, super deep snow. It just, you can't do anything about it. You land, you just submerge up to your waist in snow. I did a frontside 360 Indy. It's basically my safety trick. <laughs> I do them all the time because I think they're super fun. But uh, that one didn't work out too well. I think I landed in a pit. Well, in my tradition, I, I need to stomp it. I'm not gonna walk away with that stomp in the frontside three off this jump. It was awesome. It was just fat. It was totally fat. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, to be able to go out there, I mean, I've never snowboarded, as you all know, and to be able to hang out, professional snowboarder, show me the ropes, you know, go to the jumps. I mean, like, yeah, you sent me all the stuff that, like, I didn't even know existed. I was like, what? You know, I would have snowboarded and I had no idea it was even there. Like, oh, this looks good. I'm like, what's he talking about? And the next thing you know, it's the fattest jump ever. So, cool. you definitely opened my eyes to some cool yeah, cool. You look at things there. differently. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, uh, definitely appreciate it. No problem. And, it's a uh, pleasure. Yeah, nice meeting you, dude. Take cool. care. We'll be seeing you out there again. All right. All right. Peace. Later. What looks like fun is fun. We get to see some amazing kids, and it's a good rule. Matt, you're watching ANF TV. We're here at JT Holmes Professional Skier. This is home. Let's go get some goods. I think it's prime right now. This is the playground. Yeah. Squaw Valley, USA. Not too bad. No, I love it. That's Squaw Valley over there. That's the Palisades. Pretty big rock. What else have you uh, skied? Well, you got Talax over there. That's the biggest peak in the Tahoe Basin. That's pretty fun. But uh, today, I think, we, uh, I think Rose taking is Taking us call. too. Mount Rose, yeah. Back this way. It's back up over behind that peak. And I think it should be pretty good. The wind that might be going off. So, uh, say skiing has changed quite a bit in the, the last few years. It's a whole new school ski movement. There's been a couple revolutions. We've got twin tip skis now, so we're skiing backwards in the park and the pipe. And we got fat skis. We just copy snowboarding, basically. Snowboarding uh, kicks skiing in the butt. Skiing's going off right now. The energy in it's insane. I think Definitely. I think that skiing is, is the coolest sport in the world. So I've seen a lot of the uh, movies you've been in. Everybody watches those movies and you know, people are like, oh my god, he got to ski, nothing but the goods. And sure, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, BS interviews like this that we got to do, but <laughs> really, pretty much those, those movies don't tell lies. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's what I love to do and it's fun. The beauty of skiing is that anybody can go 70 miles an hour. Anybody can get 50 feet of air. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Is that what uh, we're looking at later today? Yeah. yeah. Be there. We're gonna Possibly more. Exactly. We're going to get you off the ground. I think the conditions are prime. I'm yes. ready for it. I'm ready for <laughs> it. I hear you are. The club of rocks are ready to hide. <laughs> so, uh, where are we heading today? Uh, I think we're going to go up to Rippy Rock and throw you off of it. Nice. It's kind of a, it's kind of a gap jump, actually. you got to get way out there. I think we should hit it. Let's do it. I'm going to do the interviews. <laughs> Let's see what we got for you. What do you want? Twin tips? Fats? You tell me, what do I need? Skis! Boots! What's with the crutch back there? Crutch as well. I can't say I've been without injury, but <laughs> it's good to be prepared having the closet. <laughs> the thing about it is, is there's this rock. And it's, it looks, it's, it's super pointy. So if you landed on it, it would pretty much just skewer you like a kebab. Try to go a 
little bigger this time. Very impressive for doing really good corporate type. And after that, throwing down a monster hook to slam. That was pretty cool. I had no legs. It sat right on my ass. <laughs> I'll hit it. You know, no, dude. What? That's straight out of sled no, next, no, dude. You know where he's going down a hill like that? I'm going to hit it so it. slow the first time and then come back around. <laughs> I don't want to hit it on the sled. Right. I haven't really jumped my snowmobile yet, but should be, uh, I think it's pretty it's soft. It's a new experience. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> next for you? Um, actually, man, after today, I want to stick around here for a while. It's so <laughs> good. Me. I've got a monster checklist of stuff I want to do just right around here in my backyard, you know? Backyard just got bigger with the snowmobiles, too. That competition's yeah. coming up? Or? Yeah, I'm going to go to Japan, I think, and uh, do a contest there, and as well as hopefully um, the Minnesota. There's a contest in, uh, in Minnesota. And uh, it should be pretty cool because all those kids out there, they just have train parks. They don't have big mountains like us. So all they do is hang out in the train parks. And they're really good and they're just super stoked on skiing. Thanks for the turns, man. No worries. It was fun. Good times. Anytime. I started wakeboarding like five years ago, but I've been water skiing my whole life. Just remember, that the main thing is keep your knees bent up to your chest and let the boat pull you up to your wakeboard. I'm Adam, I'm the host of AFTV. I'm out here on Lake Powell today, uh, right outside Wabi. Gonna do some wakeboarding with Parks Bonifay. This is him. Hey, uh, Parks uh, 18, my birthday is just a couple days ago, but uh, X Games champion in 99 and 96, and that's my claim to fame. Tell me how much money you make? Yeah. Well, so, uh, listen, now, how much was your first check? What'd you spend your money on? I bought he -Mans. I got my first check out at Cypress Run. It's like for 20 bucks, and I bought like four of them, so I was pretty stoked. I bought the castle too and everything. Castle Grace. Yeah, I was skiing out at Cypress Gardens when I was like six months, five days old. I was in the Guinness Book of World Record. What's the haircut? Why'd you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Florida gets too hot. It gets like 100 degrees in Florida. With the humid, it's like 200 degrees, but I don't know. I just had to trim it. It got too hot. Not the sponsor. Hot Tell me not the sponsor. Yeah, my, my sponsor's cut, sponsor. cut me off. Yeah. I gotta go they want a clean cut American <laughs> kid. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been teasing these people. I've been telling them to come over that we're gonna become some sweet stuff. 
And uh, now that we got you out here today, what are we looking at? What are we going to be doing? What are you going to show me? Well, what am I going to show you? That's the thing. What am I going to show you? We're going to get you out there. You're going to be busting some fat flips for everybody that's logged on right now. But uh, you get get me, you'll get me up doing a flip today? Guarantee it. I guarantee it. <laughs> or at least it. halfway around on your head. That's close, I see close enough. halfway yeah, around. You can tell you where you're at. Put that on get some, get some, like a diaper. Is this in Kevlar or how's this work? That ain't so cool. I'm gonna go out here and uh, I'm gonna teach wakeboard, you kind of colon cleansing, and uh, see if I can Parks will show me a few things. He's like, stay right there. I'm like, put your hand up. Are you kidding me? How big a cliff are you going on? I think about going three, four hundred feet. Get some, get some, get some, get some. Go again. Who is this guy here? We just need you to pull us out of the stuff. We're probably going to hit a rock or something. We're tourists. Where are you going? Huh? I mean, that's what we don't know. I just did this so that if we did sink or something, he'd help us out. Wakeboard overall, I'd say, is like meeting people and traveling the world. And that's what my goal would have been. See everything. Do as much as you can while you live.
Hey, I'm Jimmy Jacks with AFTV. We're here on location in beautiful Maui, uh, right down the beach from where these guys go off of kiteboarding. And uh, here today with me is Lou Wayman and Elliot LeBeau. So you guys are professional kiteboarders. How does FTV get started? Um, I mostly have like a windsurfing background and spent um, a large, uh, about eight years windsurfing professionally on the tour and stuff. So I kind of made the crossover from windsurfing to kiteboarding. I have more of a wakeboarding background. Like I live in Florida and windsurf there when it's windy. And um, Wake Border went wasn't really. So when did you guys move to Maui? How long ago? I lived here for almost five years. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, I lived here for like two and a half years. Two and a half years. So when you guys came over, were you guys just really jumping into the whole kiteboarding scene? I remember sitting in the living room with Lou, and uh, we had seen a couple guys kiteboarding um, earlier in the day. Lou pretty much came to the conclusion. He, he was like, yeah, you can wakeboard off of those things. Oh, really? So you guys ever saw anyone with like a wakeboard on their feet? Just like a surfboard or, or some sort of threshold board, right? Yeah, like the few guys that were doing it were on really big boards. You know, the equipment was really primitive. All right, well, I'm totally sick to try this out. I mean, you guys think I can be able to pick it up or what? I know, dude. You're going to probably get work. Yeah? It'll be good fun, I think. Yeah, for you guys, laugh them on the yeah, beach, right? Be get your out through the water. Hey, we got to stay entertained. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, let's go charge it, man. All right. I just jump onto a board and go out there? Or do you right. kind of want to learn to? Let me show you kind of the boards that we're using. Ellie and I prefer to use like a wakeboard. Um, there are you know, three different types of boards. There's the water skis, there's the wakeboards, and the directional. Um, everything is equidistant apart. You know, mm -hmm. if you're centered in the middle of the board, you have you know, this much room and this much room behind you. So. Right. Uh, and in the air, when you're spinning around, you get to that level, <laughs> everything's equal. There's no, uh, there's no swing weight. Cool. This is why we choose this, and it's got a lot more edging color. So this has a kind of like a weird like crescent shape to it. Is that a particular reason? Well, it's it's designed so that it relaunches from the water. The way that the kite works is when it's in the air, you're about 100 feet below this, uh -huh. and this kite is hovering just like this. You notice it flies really well. Yeah. Now, if this kite was to hit the water, what would happen is it'd roll on it, onto its side, and now it has a structure to float on. Okay. So it actually kind of creeps creeps along the side of the water until it gets to the edge of what we call a window. All right, let's do this. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right on. bar down and you're gonna wanna like try and hook into that. Look down. Oh dude not there. Oh crap. Alright dude we'll see you at dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out for the sharks dude they like to stay on the inside. Dude the guy sucks man. He's, I don't know what he's thinking trying to kite for it. Alright we're going to pick him up. Oh shit he's way out there. I told him to stay in and he's already going way out. Maybe the fisherman will pick him up. You know? Damn. Loose truck, so I saw him, man. Gotta get this thing tuned up. I told you, Jimmy, don't drop it. Look, what does he do? <laughs> oh, that's what happens. If you ever get a kite, this is how you want to keep your line nice and organized. This really helps in setting up. Yeah, 
All right, guys, I appreciate you taking me out today. It was really cool. Yeah, no problem. Glad you had fun. Yeah, I mean, best luck with both of you guys for the sport. Yeah, thanks. And uh, if I come out back from Maui, I got a place to stay, right? Yeah, just don't touch any of my stuff. <laughs> All right, All right, right on. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Hey, I'm Jimmy Jackson, assistant manager at the a and store at Fashion Valley Mall in San Diego. I just got to work. I'm on my way to the airport to catch flight to Maui to hook up with legendary board shaper Jimmy Lewis. I can't wait to meet this guy. I'll see you there. Jimmy Lewis is a, is a world famous shaper for definitely for the speed world as far as um, breaking records and making making boards that break speed records. And uh, we've chosen him to help us make, build boards. Um, Super technical, super nice guy. So how did you get into starting with the whole shipping of the boards? When I first started developing interest in anything in the world um, was when the surfing craze was happening in Southern California. And I started making little models of surfboards with foam, fiberglass, and resin. Were you more into surfing or the shaping of the boards? Making surfboards. And then, like, I think I first started surfing when I was in sixth grade, about a year later. In ninth grade, I made a belly board. I shaped it. Um, it was out of wood, though, but mm -hmm. I shaped it just like a surfboard and fiberglass it. And then uh, later, let's see, in the in the late '60s, I think 1968, I made my first full-size surfboard. What's your claim to fame with windsurfing? Like, what are your accomplishments with the sport? But I got a reputation as making the best speedboards in the world. The best guys rode them, and they broke several national and world speed records. All with your boards. All with my boards. Really? Always on my board. You were there for many years, basically shaping like all the windsurfing boards and you saw the sport from start pretty much to right. where it is at this point in exactly. time. Has anything come in? I mean, I know this new craze of kite surfing. I know yeah. you're kind of getting into mm -hmm. that scene right now. Mm -hmm. Has there been anyone who has had the same influence of the guys that you met originally? Mainly this guy, Lou Wayneman, who yeah. I uh, was introduced to about a year and a half ago or so. So you and Lou have a lot of interaction as far as the creation of the board. Like right. what kind of process go in making a board? Well, why don't you guys come up to my shop and we can, oh, I can show you some of the materials and, and how we go about building one of the wakeboards cool. in the surfboard style, too. All right, on. All right, let's yeah. go. All right. Come on in. Oh, nice. This place is awesome. Now this is uh, the laminating room where after the board is shaped we glass all the boards in here. There's a sanding room up back here. There's a guy in there sanding right now. This is a routing room where uh, fin boxes are put in, inserts in the deck for foot straps and stuff. This is a painting room where we paint the boards. Nothing but painting goes on in here. Right here is the shaping room. That's where it all begins. Oh, cool. You shape the board first before you do anything else. So why don't we go in here and shape one? Now this is what we call a blank. It's this polyurethane foam. Right. And uh, it's got a wood stringer down the middle, and that's to keep the uh, blank from losing its rocker. Rocker is the curve of the board this way. Is this like regular, like, like pond or like a balsa? This is, uh, this is um, spruce wood. Spruce wood? Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty sturdy then, right? Yeah, it's strong, light wood. Uh -huh. I'm going to put my mask on. Let's start doing this. Do I, uh, do I need one too? No. No, very right. That's your brand. Okay. The first thing we do is I draw the outline on this board.
So right here, I mean, you were marking 11 half inches from the center here right, that's on both the sides. Width, that's the width of the board the, the, at the widest point. At the widest point. And right here, this is a foot back from the nose. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the tail. We This is a standard measurement of shapers around the world. Are all the templates like different between each shaper? Are they all kind of the same or? Well, yeah, they're real similar, but actually, if you give two shapers the same sets of templates exactly, their boards are going to look different anyway, depending right. on how they draw it out. So what's the story with like the lights on the side here? And I mean the room is like pretty much like a dark black. Well when I'm shaping I'm I'm relying on shadows to see the curve of the board. I'm not dealing with straight flat lines here. It's all curved. I raise the board up, you can see the shadows, how you can see the yeah. the, the curve of the deck better, yeah. right? So if there's any imperfections I can see it better rather than if I had this top light on. If I have the top light on, you can't see anything. Ah, yeah. Okay. So at the bottom, you see, now you can see the shape better. And as soon as I start shaping with my planer here, you're going to see it even better. Okay. Okay, now the planer work is done. And that's what we call rough shaping right there. So this is the rough shape of the board, even though it's a lot closer than it was uh -huh. when we started with just a blank. But now I go into what we call fine shaping, which is done with the sure form again. Oh, sure form? Yeah, the okay. sure form. S, it's, well, oh, never mind how it's spelled. <laughs> <laughs> what we've got right now, we've got the bottom shape here, the bottom square, and the deck is slightly curved like this, right? right. Okay, now I'm going to turn this under, and I'm going to shape that off a little bit here. So we've got a real even curve like that. So this part you're taking off is like yeah, that's this on the, right no, here. no. This is down here. Okay. This is the bottom. Okay. Me this measurement here is how much I'm going to bring okay. this under here. All right. And then I'm going to do the deck by eye. <laughs> Done. Wow. So what I do is tomorrow I'm going to take it into this room over here. This is the fiberglass. I'll pull a layer of that out and you, you cut it around the shape of the board and then you mix up some resin, which is clear. Mm -hmm. Then you pour it on the board and spread the resin all around and lap the fiberglass real tight around it. After the board's fiberglass, I'm going to take it in that room there and put the fin box in mm -hmm. and the leash plug. And if it's a kite board, we put the inserts in and the windsurfer will inserts and deck box, whatever. After it's sanded, it'll look like just like the shape in there, only it's going to be all dull and real smooth fiberglass, yeah? Right. And then after that, we'll move it back in the laminating room, and I'll put a coat of a thin coat of resin on the outside on this side, and then we'll do the same thing on the deck. And then after that, we'll bring it back in here and we polish it, and then it's the board's finished. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Let's okay, meet you, Jimmy. Take care. Nice talking to you. All right. Take care, guys. What's up? This is Brett. I'm assistant manager at Abercrombie & Fitch in Las Vegas. And I'm on a little road trip to Bishop, California to meet up with a kid named Chris Sharma. He's the best in the country at bouldering. He's going to teach me how not to do this, how to be a little better climber. Stick around. Do you know what Bishop, California is? It's 90 miles south. I started climbing when I was 12 years old. So by the time I was 15, I put up like you know one of the hardest routes in the world. Two and a half years into it. Yeah. What's up, Chris? Hey, dude. Good morning, man. Uh, it's good to see you. We were at 5:30 in the morning in Bishop, yeah. California. So uh, you've been living here for how long? About six months. Yeah, I moved here from Santa Cruz. That's where I was born. But yeah, I basically moved here because I'm into climbing right now. So how long have you been climbing? About seven years. Bouldering definitely take it off for me. A lot of people have been making the transition to Boulder because it's just more fun, more laid back, and a lot less serious. It's just 
but at the same time, it's kind of the, the essence of climbing. You find you're one of the hardest climbs in America? I was 15 at the time, and the route that was like, the hardest grade in the country was 514C, and you no know, American had ever climbed that. And so that was a pretty big deal back then. It's, it's kind of the younger sport, like a new generation of climbers. It's about hanging out with their friends and being outside and, and having fun. Out here, the raddest things are free. But... All right, let's go do it. Yeah, that sounds good to me. The well's running on a flat side, losing its head. It's coming inside instead, moving on from the beginning to No two boulder problems are the same. Every single one is totally different, totally unique. So look at this rock, Chris. I mean, do you look at what you're going to be climbing, or do you look at what you're going to be falling on? What am I going to be climbing? Because it's so inspiring, but then I kind of look at the landing, and it's really not that good. It's kind of, if I make it on the left side of the rock, then I'm okay. But if I fall over there, then, well, I just don't want to fall over there. I mean, that's the other thing about bouldering. It's, it's like, anybody can do it. It's like, all you need, you don't have to go spend, like, thousands of dollars on gear, you know? It's like you have a pad, you have a truck bag, you have some shoes, and that's like all you need. Check inside your tongue. Is there anything moving inside of there? Check if a conversation coming down. Are you just another TV dump? Moving on, you yeah, know, so quickly. Burning all the rubber as the wheels keep turning. Moving on, you yeah, know, so quickly. Burning. Debris is burning. So you started out just pressing in? Yeah. Can we come down there? Yeah, come on down. He dies, I feel so bad. All right, here I am. You ready to take on a rock like Chris did. Took him about 13 seconds. I should be up top, a minute and a half. Using some opposition grip, just like Chris did. I'm planning the, the, the moves here, no worries. Here I go, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> there we go, I got it. <laughs> So was that, was, that, was that pretty good for the first time? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. That didn't hurt you, did it? No, we'll get, we'll get some, some easier stuff. So where are you taking me to now? We're going to the buttermilk. It's like one of my favorite climbing spots around. Let's go check out this thing up here. It's pretty rad. It's one of the hardest thing I've, I've climbed. Has anyone else done it? Yeah. Uh, like people have looked at this wall for 30 years, seeing the holds, but it's just been really hard, you know? 30 years, and a 19 year old kid's the first one to do it. It's gonna do this wall, it's about 45 degrees, put the landing backwards, which I bust it out here in a second. You really can't understand how hard that is until you just you get your first grip on there. You just realize that you're, you're 45 degrees backwards. More of a personal thing, bouldering, because who cares what other people think? It's just this is so much fun, and I love it, you know. And I just I want to do it every day. Grab this one, and you can even like, you could like throw your foot up in here uh -huh. or something. And then reach up here. I'll direct you, dude. Straight up, bump again with your left hand. Go again. Yeah. And yeah, you got it. You got it. Straight up, there's another hold on. So your left hand. Go straight up above your left, your head. No. 
Man, it feels pretty good. It was fun hanging out, man. I, I had a great time. Started out a little rough. You know, as before, I had some great instructions from you, but hey, I, I love the sport now. I'm a big fan. Big fan of yours, big fan of the sport. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate it. That's all I have to say. Me and Chris is taking a little break right now. We're probably down to this waterfall. It's a beautiful little oasis. This place is amazing, guys. You guys should be here instead of there. See you later. Yeah! <laughs> I was it. Oh! I'm a different person. filmmakers, a professional football player, two of them happen to be Abercrombie models themselves, and all I know is something about a barber shop in Nogales, Mexico, and I heard something about a gorilla. Finally, they're here. I'm not going to die in the desert all by myself. Hey guys! Hey. I thought you guys were going to leave me here. Nah, we're a little late. Sorry about that. This is where you guys do everything, right? Yeah, this is it. Let's see. You want to show me? Yeah, come on in. Okay, here we are in Doug and Toby's mobile editing unit. So I heard you guys are working on something right now, a documentary about your brother's football team. Uh, what we did is we followed the University of Miami football team. No one's ever done it before. It's pretty cool. You know, a year with the college football team. Behind the scenes, you know, we started in Chicago and Northern Florida and Arizona in the off season. And we followed like four players. You know, we went through camp, uh, first couple games, you know, meetings, um, you know, walking out in the field and all this big stuff, the highs and the lows of the season, and all the way through to the end when there's some, you know, pretty dramatic changes. So was it cool having your brother on the road with you the whole time? Yeah, it was definitely. It was a lot of fun. Did you guys ever get in any fights or anything? Um, well, we got a few disagreements. Kicked him out of the house once. Uh, settled yeah. our differences in various ways. <laughs> we got the fight yeah. once. We to we. Uh, we settled it on the field one day. So, you guys, this is obviously a huge project. How do you even start going about doing something like this? Well, you're right. It's a very uh, delicate and intricate process. First of all, we, you got to sit down and like think of a script. And actually, if you want, we can do a little script now. What are we going to do our skit on? Muscle trucks. Big tire. <laughs> Now this one, you come with it. <laughs> and then, but this guy doesn't even get out of here, too. <laughs> How about we do um, a blind date skit? Yeah, that'd be cool. Like we, we were saying have, earlier. Yeah, yeah, we could have like Toby getting ready for the date and stuff, and you can go yeah. and pull it up. The scene will be like he's going out on the blind date with you. Okay. And you're best friends with him, but you're trying to like you're trying to like ruin them because you're trying to get to you're trying to get to her. So you'd be like, dude, I'll take care of you. I'll get you ready for this date, right? I'll get the first shot where you guys are like walking this way. Okay. See, so, and we'll get that shot, and we'll have them act it out, and they'll do it a couple times, and I'll just film behind like them walking in. Awesome. And then maybe the next shot can be them coming out. You want to do the camera? Show where to do the camera. All right, you want to get the shot? Yeah. Okay, just put that in your phone. Okay. Put your hand through there. Okay. So you're gonna set me up, I gotta look good, man. I know, I'm gonna set up the straw right over here. I got the straw all lined up, perfect. We're gonna get you all nice and set up. High fashion, huh? So well, you look hot, I feel good. Let's go get your hair. Alright, this is what we're gonna do. We went to the thrift store, now we get the haircut, right? So we're gonna have them walk in just kind of like they did at the thrift store, and he's gonna be like, alright, I'm gonna take care of you, get your haircut then, right? Get into the haircut place. And then we'll have you walk by the front of the store, and you look in, and you're like, oh, look at that geek, who's that geek, right? And I'll get a like, close up kind of headshot of you, and then I'll get kind of a headshot of Toby through the window, like you don't, you know, you don't know that he's your gay. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> Grace, third day he rose to the past. That's the last of the instant creep. So I'm a epic. Start a lot of death. Let's see what's for now. As for now, I keep talking it. As for now, believe us, they keep talking it. As for 
You run out first, Jeff, you're standing right here, you're chasing her, you got your marshal trucks in your hand, and you're like, wait, and you're like waving your marshal trucks. Jeff, you like kind of grab her hand like a relay, and you guys just take off. Toby, come to a skidding stop right here, and then we'll cut to a shot of you two running off down the street that way, but just uh, uh, holding hands, and then we'll cut back to Toby in the face. What was your friend saying? He seemed really nice. Uh, never mind him. You believe in love at first sight? Because I do. Not really. Um, so what was his name again? He seemed... Uh, no, I think... I thought his name was Jack. Really no. Oh. Anyways, um, I was talking about blind dates yeah. with my friend the other day, and I was just talking about how great they seem, and they're... Are you paying attention to me? Because you don't seem like you're listening at all. Yeah. What are you doing under there? What are you doing? Uh, nothing. Playing with monster trucks? No, it's the room. You are house. such a freak. I'm out of here. The band will be changing costumes, and you'll see it's much the same. So sing our songs, and for applause, we'll get up, get up. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It was awesome. I've never seen anybody get a mullet willingly. It was incredible. I can't wait to see your guys' film, and I can't wait to see you playing professional football with whichever team you choose. It was awesome. Thank you so much for letting me hang out with you. See you later. Bye. 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 Are you sure this is you? Yeah. Jeff Popovich there in the special team huddle. During the summer, he and his older brother, Doug, they got picked to uh, be models for a magazine shoot. And what it turned out to be was the Abercrombie and Finch summer catalog. Abercrombie? I don't know anything about that. And Jeff Popovich was the cover boy. He was in a mall one day and he saw his picture on a bag that somebody was carrying out of the store. He said, oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be that much, and he was on the covers. He's obviously he's taking a lot of ribbing from his teammates who call him Model Pop. from the ANS store in Provo, Utah. I'm Ashley Zergo from the Tuttle Crossing Mall in Columbus, Ohio. Today we're here in Thomaston, Georgia, and we're going to go free flying. Skydiving, and I am afraid of heights. You're afraid of heights, and you're going skydiving, so the producers were unaware of this, right? Well, I let them know in the audition, but I'm hoping to get over my fear today. By jumping out of a plane with a hole in it. Right here, this door. Probably about to push you out, right? Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? I'm Ashley. I'm Tony Davis. How's it Sarah. going, man? Hey. So, you guys like free flyers, right? What's yeah. the difference between that and skydiving? A, a general way to break it down is anybody over 30 flies under the belly. <laughs> <laughs> anybody <laughs> under 30 it's pretty much free flies. Sure. You know, it's not that they can't do it, they just kind of hold and, you know, yeah. sitting, standing, head down, which is where you fly in front of the people. You can have two ways, four ways, eight ways. There's a lot of creative different types of things you can do. Hey, guys, I got the raft. Oh, great. the raft for
the raft dive. The raft dive was cool. That was awesome. Uh, the raft decided to open up about the same time as my uh, my canopy and spun up my canopy and got all caught up and I spent about three thousand feet getting it untwisted and out. Of, from my point besides you didn't look as dangerous, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had no idea. You had no idea. The canopy. <laughs> That's the gear. Any questions? Hands all the way up. Ready? And boy, nice and slow. It's a nice slow move. Bring your arms in. Look at your arms. Go to two feet by the end of your eye. There you go. All right. Bring your knees in a little bit. Whatever. Laughing up there. You were not <laughs> laughing. You were not. You were so serious. Whatever. You were so. Do you think that you said you were feeling a little queasy or something about no, that? No, I'm fine. I took some drama and I'm good to go. No, I, the day. I don't know about that. Five brand reps from ANF with two things in common. We all work in an AMF store and we're all going to learn to sail. Vince is the captain. He had enough of the flatland. So he bought a 60 foot sailboat and moved to the Virgin Islands. I leave New York City. I came to the Caribbean to have a good time. Enjoy the sailing weather and sunshine. That's all that's fun for me. Here in my holiday. And I want to wish for sure I ain't going back New York no more We're going to go probably straight over to Yost Van Dyke or St. John first To do that, we're going to sail out this way And we're going to leave tonight And so we'll do a little night singing Because we want to get out into the British Virgin Islands And if it's late enough and we're all tired We'll stop here in front of Canille Bay Which is sort of my backyard It's where I live most of the time We'll probably wake up there in the morning I'm sure you guys will all be up at sunrise exercising and stuff like that. Those are. <laughs> what do you need us to do? Like, you okay, well, this is, this is awesome for me. I got five crew here, so I'm going to put you guys to work. Starting out with the sailing, I'm going to have you doing like hauling the sails up, and trimming the sails, that kind of thing. Because, and hopefully, if I get to just sit there and watch you guys do all the work, that'll be one. <laughs> You're going to be the mainsail hauler for me. What you got to do first is this is the mainsail halyard. That's the line that hauls it up. Okay. So we loosen this clutch. Okay, Amber, you're going to be our mooring dropper when we get underway. When I say okay, just going to do that. Is that one? Yeah, oh, under the thing? And let the whole line go in the water. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's something. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Okay, so both packing. You're pulling up the slack. 
flopping. Right when it gets to the shrouds there, you want to give it a good hard pull. The person tailing you probably be saying where I am. Put a foot up and just get your back into it and pull. Right as it flops around the shroud. If you do it right, you'll get in and take about two cranks and tax down. We're all set. Go. Okay. Oh, completely re-rigged say 15 years ago right. and the rig is in is in good shape good trick, right. it doesn't show any problems at all cool. from down here but it's really important to go and check it out top of the map did you just hurry up and get to the top yeah for real we're getting tired man let's go up man You know the first night when I came home I was drunk as I could be I saw some boots in the corner where my boots started to be Oh come here little wifey explain yourself to me Why is them boots in the corner where my boots started to be Oh you're plain fool, you're drunk fool, can't you see it's oh, only a pain that might be for me We've been in this world no, for far too long Let's all do a round of rubber 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 Oh yeah, that's a perfect round of rubber rubber I don't know about you guys, but I'm totally stoked about tomorrow's race. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no doubt. So, Vince, is it like a football team where we each have our own position and we know where we're going, or are you just going to be like hollering, yo, you do this, this? Basically, we'll have grinders on the winches for the jib, and I want somebody in charge of the main sheet, and I'll need somebody on the foredeck calling the jib for me. And But you never know. I mean, it, it's so dynamic, you never know what's going to happen. So we're really going to be the fastest boat out there. Rainbow Maker is really good. Most of the time, I'm the first over the line in these races. Yeah, there's, there's the right two on. boats that can give us a run for our money. And if we don't do it right, then we won't be the fastest boat out there and everybody will know. I know it's going to be out around Flanagan Island and then around Pelican Island and then back in 
So basically that's going to be a long windward leg, broad reach leg, and long downwind leg. It's on now, we're going to get him. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! We started out really poorly and uh, well we kind of really? caught up a little bit, did our best. I wrapped this thing up wrong and kind of screwed us up, lost us a couple yards there, but hey. A couple of yards, a couple of hundred yards. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What a slam! It used to be so nice. We were a pretty good team, kind of. In a, in a, no, for, your for your first time race. ever doing it, that was great, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was. You know, I'm yelling at you because I want to get done because yeah. we were facing the other boat. We're all, we're all back. It's all motivation. Up. It's not anger. Yeah. Yeah. We we're there for each other. Green hills, blue sky, the crystal water, birds sing sweet lullaby, sailors are sailing on the deep blue sea, this is a picture God paint for me, he did. You say not let up to you now. You say not let up to me, mother. You say not hundred fifty dollars. I wanna come back to just and that. Ooh, you say not let up to you now. You say not let up to me, mother. You say not hundred fifty dollars. I wanna come back down to just and that. Sailing through the Virgin Islands changes things. We came down here as five strangers looking for sun and fun. But we're leaving as close friends. And that's the best part. I leave New York City. I came to the Caribbean to have a good time. Jackson host of ANF TV from Fashion Dive Mall, San Diego. I'm meeting up with Ali Lopez and Lala Nesker, two super cool surf chicks. We're gonna go charge the swatch with April today. Hey guys, here we are in Mission Beach, San Diego, with two professional surfers, as I promised you, Lila Metzger and Ali Lopez. We're about to tackle this enormous wave that we keep on hearing about, and they're talking so much trash, it's ridiculous. 
that I'm like, oh, this is going to be hard. Like, no, it's not. It's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. So you guys are both from Hawaii, correct? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys both surf and model. Is that basically what you're doing? Yeah. Really? Right, yeah. It's a tough lifestyle, you know? Like that's. Hard, you know? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I walk around, like, look pretty, pain, and, and go surfing every day. I don't want to hear it. That's yeah. a joke. <laughs> Total joke. When did you move here? How long ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. About you? About, I've been here on and off for two years, but the last four months I've been here solid. I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> Do you miss it back there? I miss my family. Really? Yeah. Oh, your family's not here. You're by yourself. Yeah, right? I just got married, so. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. I didn't know. Thanks. <laughs> so when did you start surfing? How long ago? Um, Probably about nine years ago. Nine years? Yeah. It's ridiculous. How about you? About six years ago. Six years ago? Yeah. You guys ready to charge this or what? We're ready. Yeah. We're ready. <laughs> Soft. It's so great. I like it. They're too bad. Helen, you guys surf a lot and everything. Do you guys can handle this or what? Um, maybe. Maybe. That's not the attitude. I want to hear you ready to hit it. Yeah, we can. Yeah. I know it's nothing like surfing, but yeah. it'll be fine. I think we'll try it. Well, what I think we'll do is we'll do bodyboards first, and then maybe we'll maybe incorporate standing on them, and then we'll try the surfboard or whatever, that good. whatever apparatus they want to throw our way. And obviously, since none of us have any background whatsoever, we're going to go ahead and talk to Albert. One of the local guys here. How's it going, man? Hey, how are you? We figured out how to ride this now. Uh -huh. When we first had the wave. I'm glad you did because we have yeah. no idea at all. Actually, this is a mobile wave. Mm -hmm. And it's made out of 12 containers that are actually shippable on trucks. And that's how we transport it around the world. Um, all the water is contained below. Okay. 100,000 gallons. Because water is recycled that's through right. and over and over. So how high can you get this? I mean, you can get like head high, like thrown up right over this lift? Or? Well, in California, we measure things by a ruler, right? And it's be about ten feet for us, and for Hawaiians, it's probably about three to four yeah. feet. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> how exactly do we start? Is it like a launching pad or anything? Or? Yeah, if you look right over here, you can kind of see the entry slide, All right. and you kind of sit there, get your board on or get ready, uh -huh. and you just slide in with the flow. Cool. And uh, I'll give you some tips on how to ride a bodyboard, and then we'll move to the to a strapless board where you're gonna have to stand up. I'll probably give you a prop, something to hold on to, you know, a little rope or a, a, a pole or another mm -hmm. board. And then you're just gonna feel the flow. It's very foot sensitive. It's you know closer to skateboarding because okay. the board's so small. Right. W once you go back to surfing after this, you're gonna say, hey, this board's way too yeah. big. <laughs> you have a dial for each pump, big one, red, emergency stop button right in the middle. Like, what's the story with that? But they're getting pinned down. Then I'll hit the emergency stop. It's only happened once or twice that we've actually hit it. Yeah. Uh, and normally, as you hit it, the gap your pops yeah. launches yeah. out like a rocket. So can we see this in action? Good. Let me fire it up. You guys ready to do this? Ready. All right, let's go.
falls down, I like go over you, like I'm like on the edge. I fall back out, and all of a sudden I'm like, there's this black thing like crumbling around like in like the water. You could see me, like, I'm like, no. where'd she go? Stop! Where'd she stop? The worst part about the whole thing is like every once in a while, like we go for a couple times, and like one of those guys would just like jump on from the back of the wave and do like 360 flips. So I'm like. What the hell? You, you like had that one barrel over. roll that one time. I think we landed that. I was like, what the hell is she doing? You're like, how do I do this again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that I actually landed that. <laughs> Hey guys, what's happening? My name is Brandon Neighbors. I'm from Dallas Galleria at Abercrombie and & Fitch, and I'm here today with Emily from Southern California. What do you think about today, Emily? Well, today we're going to learn how to ride motorbikes with Ezra Luck, one of the best motocross riders in the world. I've never been on a bike. What about you? Oh, I've been on a bike a time or two, but I think I want to try this little testing track out, and then I might want to see what Ezra's got. I heard you ride bulls. you think a bull and a bike have anything in common? Oh, man, I'm good. If I can ride a bull, I can ride a bike, and I think Ezra's going to go down. I guess we'll see. This jump here is the triple jump. It's probably the biggest jump on the track that we hit. And um, that's where you see everybody doing showboat and, and things like that. Who designs the course? Um, there's a group called Dirt Works. They design all the tracks and uh, they design all the tracks for the test facilities also. The bike that I race is uh, production based. It's production chassis. Um, you can't mess with any of that in the race. Your bike's name is Lucy over there. I thought it might be like the boat thing. That's the name of the girl. <laughs> Sick. Is there any way, like, while you're jumping, I can get on the hill and, like, stand up and jump? Just stand on the second jump, and then if I come close, it's up. All right, cool. Watch this, guys. I know you had never ridden a dirt bike before, but how do you think it's going to go today? It's going to go great. I'm excited. I'm ready to do it. Cool. Well, let's do it. Put your hand here. You don't want to bend your wrist. Hold on. Whoa. I guess we got to do this for the girls. It's kind of confusing when you got so many little gadgets going on. No, I mean, they say this guy's good, but I think I'm going to call Ezra out and see what he's got. Brandon's been running his mouth all day, so he knows how to ride a motorcycle now. So every time I go up to the top, they usually pull in the clutch and let it back out. Like I was, I was just starting right back over. Something like this, you want to try to lean the bike over a little bit, but stay on the gas. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Who it is, man? That was sweet, dude. Appreciate you, man. Cool. It was a lot of fun. So I noticed you you saw the name on my seat there. They changed Lus to Lucy. Yeah. You got I, a new name for it since you ride bulls and everything? I don't know. I was thinking about Twister. That was a pretty rough one that I rode one time. Twister? Yeah. That sounds pretty good. We might try that one. Yeah? Dude, that's rodeo. <laughs> Hey guys, what's happening? My name is. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> so it was the height of the Nirvana thing, and just seeing guys throw their guitars around with a bunch of noise and not really playing like leads or hot solos, and that you could do that and still make songs. Up. Welcome to NF TV. We're in Lawrence, Kansas. It's cold. The studio. We're loading up stuff for the van. Apple seed cash. Let's go ahead and check out see what's going on, man. Come on. Josh. What's up, man? What's going on, dude? How you doing? Let me introduce you to the fellas. This is Mr. Chris Krishi. How you doing? Pretty good. This is the other separation. Booth with EP and Marco. Now we're in here, we're getting little rebels on the drums. That's why I'm talking all quiet. Ready to rock. Hey, what's up? How much? It's nice to meet you. I'm Tarn. Nice to meet you, I'm Ed. I'm Dave. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So you're the producer guy? I am the producer guy. That's Shannon. So man, you want to give us a little tour of what's going on in here? But yeah, basically um, everything out there, all the microphones that are in front of instruments out there, uh, come into the control room at the console. From the console they get routed through all the outboard gear there and to the tape machine. The tape machine is where everything is recorded and from there, it comes back into the console, which is where I try to make it sound good. Just give me, I don't know, a few seconds of how ever loud you're gonna be. Uh, we're just doing some line checks, getting a good feel for the room, oh, testing yeah. everything out so that all the levels are good, and we got all the room mics levels cool. set right. Yeah, because I was hearing it in the control room. It sounded pretty good. Cool. Everything is totally isolated, so as we're recording things, um, I have total control over pretty much every aspect. I mean, we take a listen here. All the guys can be playing at the same time? Exactly. Everybody's out there playing at the same time. And as we're listening to it right now, you can hear all the parts of the band, but come over here. I can listen to just the bass guitar, or just the bass drum. Who are some of the bands you've worked with? Well, when I was assisting in Los Angeles, I assisted on everything from Paul Abdul to Aerosmith to Red Hot Chili Peppers to Bat Midler. Of all places, Lawrence, Kansas. I grew up in the Midwest, really liked the Midwest, and Lawrence is a great college town. Fans love coming here and enjoy getting out of bigger cities and uh, enjoy the atmosphere and have a really good time. So as far as these guys go, Apple Seed Cast, what do you think about their album? Well, this is the second album I've done for them, and uh, I think they're a great band. Um, well, they've got three though, right? They've yeah, exactly. They had done one, I don't know, a couple years back, and then we, we did uh, Mari Vitalis, 
last year, which turned out really, really well, and everybody was really happy with it. And I think it's done done real well for them. So we just decided to go with kind of the same setup for for this record, and so it's more the same vibe. Exactly. You know, we're all happy with the way that one turned out, and this was just going to be a little bit more of a, a refined a refined version of that record with a lot better songs. So I think we're all real excited about it. It's a little more on the bass. Let's kick it up a little bit. I can't hear it. <laughs> That's a little better. What do you think, buddy? Uh, I think it's pretty much set. That's kind of weird there. I think it's a little light. Let's do it one more time. Okay. On that, some of those like rock hits is a little bit slow, so we're just gonna go out and rock a little bit harder. started seeing people like uh, bands like Sonic Youth and at the time I mean I was I'm a little older so it was the height of the Nirvana thing and just seeing guys throw their guitars around with a bunch of noise and not really playing like leads or hot solos and that you could do that and still make songs. I want to say Josh I hear you now you know you're the drummer and everything so you know I do a couple of beats myself and we can trade off a couple of things or something. Let's go ahead and check it out. Cheeks, cheeks dig. I play the drums too, man. I can do all that stuff. <laughs> watch close. Okay. Take notes if you have to. I'll be getting my things now and leaving. <laughs> Bobsledding and skeleton racing with four, four. Olympic hopefuls. Olympic hopefuls. Yeah. That's right. We'll be watching them on TV. Yeah? Uh, you ready to go? I got involved in it because it looked crazy. Most of us ran track in college, that's what I did. I was a top athlete at the University of Virginia. We get recruited to be brakemen. So then I was brakeman on the national team for three years. And then some of us decide I'd like to learn how to drive. So then I learned how to drive and now I'm a driver. There's probably about six or seven people that have a legitimate chance to make the games. Right. And you know, I'm one of them. It'd be great for us to just be there being brothers, you know, because we've, we've always done everything together. The Olympic trials are not until January of 2002. So in January, it doesn't matter whether you're on the national team, whether you just picked up driving or what. If you win, if you get first or second in the Olympic trials, you're going to the Olympics. And both of our teams are ranked first and second in the world right now. So we're definitely going to bring home some medals. All right, the proper way to carry your sled is you're going to put your belly up right here against the pan of your sled. You're going to reach around, and these are your handles. The runners you're not going to want to grab because they're kind of sensitive. These are your bumpers, so you're not going to grab onto that at any time. 
And our arms this go around like that. Right there. Yeah. Right there. 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 Elbows in, your wrists are Elbows in, wrists in. We had a guy lose his thumb up in Calgary. Like, yeah, that's why I'm gonna be He just put his hand down and. I mean, his thumb was in his glove still, but it was right. attached. Yeah. This is the actual Olympic track. So when I'm sitting at home, all cozy with by the fire, watching the Olympics, I can tell everybody that I was here yep. doing a skeleton on, on the track. Yep. When you're coming around this curve right here, how fast do you think? Oh. Uh. From the top, you're doing about 75. You get a speeding here. ticket for going that fast. Yeah, they're almost upside down at some of these yeah, turns. The, curve, the curve comes like this. So when the bobsled's on it, you're more upside down than you are right side up. You can't brake, you can't slow down, and you can't steer. That's the best part about it. So we're about 15 minutes away from doing our first skeleton race, I guess you could call it. Skelly. Skelly. Yeah, and I'm thinking I'm going to beat you. That's my, that's my hopes. I want to, no, we'll you know. Yeah, well, maybe. We'll a little nervous. Adrenaline's going, pumping, heart's going. Yeah. See you at the top. See you at the top. <laughs> Don't catch it, just hold on, that. you'll go back. Yeah. And just hold on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So Erin, you know what I think is pretty cool is that bobsledding was outlawed for women in the Olympics until this year, 2000, well, next year, 2002. And uh, in the skeleton racing, I beat you. Yeah. Yeah. You did. I you did. did. You did. I did. You did. You did a great job. You Gotta give me job. some props. Thanks. Great. Oh, oh, no, I did it. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> I've always tried to model my life after uh, seizing opportunities and bobsled sort of fell into my lap. I'm from Houston, Texas. Whoever thought it just they asked me to come try out. I did. I made the team. I had no idea what I was doing and I just felt like it wasn't something I could turn down. And I've ended up loving it. I've met amazing people. I've traveled the world in a way I will never travel the world. Like as a part of an athletic team, I've learned so much about winter sports, so much about other ways of life. I've already gained so much from it and it's a blast. So I, I just feel like I have an opportunity to make the Olympics. And if I don't give it my all, then I will forever regret that. What's up? My name is Joshua Williams. I'm Kristen Van Dam. I'm from the San Francisco store. And today we're going to hang out with the far side. And the... What? You don't know who the far side is? Man, they, they tour with Tribe Called Quest, Ruth, De La Soul, Diggable Planets, even Core, man. These, these guys are off the hook, man. I'm telling you, how they know how to do it. And we get to hang out with them all day. Yes. Yeah, so, right so, so come join us. You can hang out with them, too. Hey, don't get jealous, because we get a party now. Far side. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, y'all? And they say all the famous people are lazy. No, no. Hello. How you doing? 
you guys is chilling? Uh, man, about to roll out, you know what I'm saying? Just rolled in, got the show tonight. Then we're gonna roll out, show tomorrow night. So, uh, tonight it's gonna be at the... It's gonna be at the Bricks Club, should be hot. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be us, it's gonna be Souls of Mischief. Mm -hmm. Black Thought's supposed to be coming by since there's like the Sundance Film Festival right, in right. town and everything. Uh, I know you what if you want you guys to do plain, plain rap? What is that all about? You know? That's a new record from the far side. We're creative, inventive, musical scientists. And for us to create the same invention over and over again would be useless. I mean, I think like Beasties and, and Mike D and them, like yeah. being that they were like punk rockers at first, then they went to the hip hop scene. The diversification of hip hop is what is, is <laughs> got me going. It's just cool. It just like it gives you inspiration. You know what I'm saying? It Definitely. gives me inspiration to do something different and try to come with something new. Like you just try to make music for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna please myself and I don't care about anybody else. Uh -huh. And blah blah blah. Yeah, but it's like you know why? Why nobody buys your record? You know what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta basically put it out there. If you want people to like it, then you gotta kind of make stuff for people to like. I say we kind of warm up. Uh, um, the, the show and I get pumped up. You guys get on the court with us and play some basketball. You get served. Oh, you get served. Oh, oh, you get served. Y'all can't mess with the third. Oh, <laughs> 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 this is my team. Hey, you take Brown, and I'll take. I'll try to hang with this guy. We ain't number one. We ain't number one. You might get your Kobe Bryant time. so they can represent tonight. But like I said, they crack under pressure. They, they look at them, they're sweating. They yeah. up. They're just warming up, baby. Number one. <laughs> I would like my rematch. You owe me a rematch! That's right. 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 That's Hey kids, don't try that at home, okay? We got a guitarist on the crew, a DJ, DJ. And, their, and their names are what? Who are they? Ken Walk Ken is Walk. our DJ. Yeah. Man on the keys is Danny, and we got Sergio on the guitar. All right, all right. And that's our rhythm section. Give it up for the rhythm section. Rhythm section. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fun. Maybe y'all can come down Definitely. with us and check us out the sound check. Maybe y'all can come down sound with us and sound check. check. See what's Playing happening. See wire. how we roll up <laughs> fat Cuban cigars and smoke them <laughs> with no nothing that's illegal in them. <laughs> Just tobacco yeah. in them. Woo, you know, nice, come man. on down. Come on down. Next time you see us, we'll be on the microphone. Microphone. One, two. There's a lot of players in the game 
And they seem to can't remember why they got their gold Lost they soul like skipping in the minnow Now they got a long face like Leno Stress, getting gray, nervous Asking what they did to deserve this Maybe it's not what you did, but what you did First show down, 18 to go. This is the life of Far Side, and they're loving every minute of it. A couple weeks ago, the ANF TV producers gave me a call to see if I wanted to teach three brand reps how to wakeboard. I think their names are Rob, Joe, and Josh. Well, I've never, I've never, I've never, I've never driven. I've driven four boats in my life. Can you teach me? These guys may think they're tough. I can't feel my eyes, but we'll see. Driver, right? Yeah, who wants to go? Oh, I'll I'll do it. I think I'll take Joe here. He oh, seems oh, to be Joe's out. the man! Oh, Joe's oh, off the hood! Driving's a pretty big part to wakeboarding because no matter how good the steer is, if the driver's messing everything up, like losing the speed, it's going to affect whoever's behind the boat. Have you ever gotten hurt wakeboarding? Yeah, I've been hurt pretty bad actually. Um, this past July, I had busted my chin open and broke a couple teeth. And <laughs> All you want to do is just relax, sit back when you're kind of, in, kind of in like a recliner or a chair. What you want to do is bring the rope around, you want the handle right in at your hip. If you have it right here, your board's going to fly out and you're going to catch an edge so hard. Ten bucks and you can't get up in like at least eight tries, what, seven, eight, nine tries. Twenty, twenty dollars, ten bucks, twenty, dollars, twenty bucks, okay. Right, twenty tries. bucks afterwards. Look, what, Brizzy, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Dude, I don't I think so. I will, I will, I will. <laughs> Nineteen more to go. Oh no, seven more to go. I get my twenty bucks. <laughs> Face plan. What did I do wrong? It feels like a dog running into a car door. Come on. You guys better quit laughing because you're up next. What? Uh, you nervous, Joe? We can handle it. The athletes here. Uh, You didn't get yourself a chance to get up. You're turning before you're even out of the water. Before we leave, he'll, he'll be up riding that board. We have sympathy for you. The bet's off. It's all good. Just relax and enjoy yourself. I want my 20 bucks. How do you think I did? You did pretty good. You got up. The only thing you're having trouble with is trying to turn too early, but we got you up on the board, so that's the first it's step. When the boat pulls you up there, yeah. you're kind of just helpless. Rob, I'm going to school you, okay? I'm going to show you how this is done. Look at this Sally hey, blowing lobster, over. Lobster boy. Face diving. Lobster boy. Oh, no. Hey, all I got to say is you better do it in three tries or you get no lips from the pro. You're letting your arms pull out and you're trying to pull yourself up. You can't use his muscles on this one. The boat has to do all the work. So, um, talk so much cash about me, you know, but I got up. Well, you can I'm not fighting it too hard. You're way too hard. You gotta go with it. Go with it. When everything's on 
me now, man. The pressure's on me because these guys, they look kind of rusty. They need some oil under the arms and the legs like whatnot. Do you like the box? No, I don't. I don't can you back it up? Can you back it up? I can back it up. I am too strong, but I won't. Tristan, bust some skills, do some flips, do some grabs. Then we're gonna go get some grub, barbecue, flip a few burgers, get some drinks. Let me come back out here and then I'm gonna try to do my thing one more time. <laughs> get me going up? Is this food going to keep me down or am I going to be able to stand up? I hope so. We've tried everything. What? Wow. What you've been doing? We need to get you up out of that water. How did you get into wakeboarding? I don't know. It just it just happened by chance. My uh, my dad wanted to buy a boat one day and I was actually dating a guy and my dad's like, well, let's get some water ski equipment. And the guy was saying, so like, well, get a wakeboard. And I was like, what's that? And he gave me a magazine and I looked at it and I was like, that's rad. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna go to Florida State to play softball and just decided to uh, give it up a scholarship to stay with the water. That's sweet. Yeah. How long did you play softball and soccer for? You I played like forever since you could start. People, there's tons of guys out there like Sean Murray, Darren Shapiro, Parks Bonifay. Wait, you know, wasn't Parks on a was he on TV show? It was like the first yeah. episodes of yeah. NFT. Parks was actually probably there when I was just learning how to wakeboard. So he was there when I first started. Did so, you learn anything from him? Yeah, just watching him, just you watching can just it? pick up so much stuff. Yes. I got some food in my stomach. We're going to get back in the water and I'm going to yeah. stand up. Yeah. We're going to do this. Yeah. We're going to handle this. <laughs> Can't jump like that. It's a Sunday, a sunny Sunday. I eat my breakfast and plan my day out. I'll go shopping and spend my money. Buy my groceries. Boy, oh boy. That was awesome. What do you guys say about that? How'd I do? How'd I do? You got like a good couple of feet of air that was so <laughs> sweet. So sweet air yeah, time. Thank definitely. you so much. You were helping me out. Tell me, just get over the little wave there. Yeah. Cut out to the right, get my little edge, lean back, boom! Yeah, yeah. You guys were incredible. I mean, you guys got up your first day or learned how to jump, and that's it's amazing. So hopefully we'll see you again. So we're welcome back. Of course, you're always welcome, always welcome in Extreme Wake. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
state of Sao Paulo. Oh, Texas. It's like a safe, clean race. I like a lot of rubbing, buffing. You know. We're gonna go meet Sarah Fisher. She's 20 years old. She's the only one in the car. Right Who drives on a date? You're the guy. The guy. Ask her to drive. I gotta drive. I'm like, last day for you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, we grew up racing go-karts and big wheels. And it was, oh, we had hydraulics on our big wheels. <laughs> Whatever you do, your fastest time will be where you start on the grid. The farther up you start, the less chance you have of being involved in accident. On certain, he's way too, he should be a lot farther up than he is. If you make a mistake as a spotter, you can send your driver to the wall. Driving an Indy car can only see in a vision pattern about like this. Spotter's job is to get another set of eyes for the driver. Here's some colorful language and I'm liking it. What are you doing tomorrow with that pole? Well, tomorrow I'm going to be holding out a, it's called a lollipop, which is actually like the sign that they put in front of the car when it's pulling into the pit. Eddie's going to be pulling the nose of the car right up to the front of the sign and that's where they stop. in the car and have him change the car. I can handle that. Closing? Yeah. When you get there, you stop. Okay. Slam those brakes. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Am I on it tomorrow? Gonna jail, man. Great, great. I'm gonna replace my driver, so I gotta get ready to get in my car.
racing. You think of IndyCar racing as being like all about the driver and the car, but you don't realize that it's the crew, it's the spotter, it's the driver, it's everything. Is it hot in your cars? Yeah, I use that. It's very hot. I'm all natural. I'm very hot in my cars. But you know, when I'm trying, when I'm trying yeah, to shoot under jack power, it tends to cool down. So I'm, yeah. yes, it does. Very nice, actually. How long have you been racing? About five years, actually. Five years. I started out in uh, Silver Bullets, and I moved my way on up to Indy. So after that, you know, this is where I am now. first started it, I mean, the whole idea was like, well, let's see if we can even go off-road. Then now it's just progressed to uh, right up there with snowboarding. Rodeo flips with the dirt, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane, man, just because, I mean, I've seen it done out, you know, out in the snow, I mean, you got something to land on, but yeah. I think dirt, that's pretty, oh, that's pretty risky. Just taking it to the next level. I know it's like, this is more or less like a modified skateboard. This looks like a regular skateboarding deck. Of course, you have, you know, a little bit of you know difference as far as like the way the board's built. Yeah, uh, it's a little more concave and cambered right. than a normal skateboard. A little bit longer, but essentially it is a skateboard deck. Now right. these boards right here, this is different. This is yeah. full on P-Tex sidewall. This is a lot more. This is like snowboard construction. You know, we get people calling in every day from around the world, and uh, it's cool to think that you know something that we started. Uh, you know, many years ago, people are just loving. And we're in the kind of marketing and sales room right now, but uh, our factory is just right out this door. Nice. Oh, we get to see that today? Uh, yeah, well, it's locked up, but um, if you're willing to like jump over this fence. You get muddy. You ready to go? You're getting dirty. Oh, I, I'm ready to get dirty. Let's go. Ooh, we're looking alright. We're ready, man. Take out some dirt. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, see. That's a nice way of saying you're not ready yet, but I don't want to say that to the camera. <laughs> High drive is one of the gnarliest races we do on the circuit and 30 people start on this course all at once and it's every man for himself so like when people wreck your only option is to jump right over them otherwise you're going to go slamming in. Like you could pick it up, get on a board, and really in a couple hours, 
this is something you could really take seriously and get good at. You don't mind being on top of a beautiful mountain in Colorado where you can stop over the ledge to get some fresh water. This is so awesome. We won't work the schemes to be concerned. No, you can't breathe, Megas, you can't breathe. Man, you live a life to come and now to me. See, this is what happens, you know, if I was too good for the leash, I could take the board on, but as you can see, uh, wasn't quite ready yet. Can't breathe, man, you 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 can't breathe, man, There's all kinds of different scenarios I've been in. The most difficult one was being in Nepal. You basically have to hike into every single river that you want to go do. And so when you hike in, let's say three days, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're out there running hard class five rapids. Anything happens. Nepalese medicine is going to do absolutely nothing for you. If you cut yourself, take some mud and fill in the crack. Ben, I, I see no white water. I see a lake. What's this? Well, first we're gonna start off in this nice little warm springs over here. Teach you guys how to paddle around. Oh, geez, watch out, watch out, watch it. Oh, it's so heavy. Throw it down with the meaning. Awesome. Now we're gonna be bad and go kayak. The thighs go up underneath these things as it thigh braces. This is a spray skirt you put it on, like. You're going out to the bar and you're slipping on the main stair, it's nice and tight. And you know how to do that? Yep. Yeah. Oh, this is the first move, it's called a cartwheel. This is the basic roll. Get my skirt on. I'm off. Wow. Life is still sweet. Life is still sweet. These guys are ready to learn how to roll. What's gonna happen is you're gonna put your, you're gonna bring your hand up. Oh no, the elbow stays down. The elbow stays down the whole time. You're gonna bring it up. You put your nose to your armpit. And when you get there, when you get there, <laughs> your blade's gonna go like this. You're gonna feel the surface of the water, and you're gonna snap your hips. We're gonna get this today. Whatever you say. <laughs> There we go. We're in somewhere. We've been out here for about two hours and we're sick of this flat water, so we're going to head over to the river. Now we're out here on the Snake River and we got Ben stretching in the background. We got about 20 of the world's best whitewater kayakers out here practicing. Kayaking for a long time, and I know that you know it's changed a lot. It's changed quite a bit since I started. I mean, it was a small grassroots, you know, sport. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're driving down the road, and you saw another kayaker, you honked and waved because you were so excited you saw another kayaker. But now it's huge. I mean, there's kayakers everywhere. As an athlete, it's taken off. There's a lot more money in the sport. We're able to go and travel to exotic countries and have our trips paid for, and that's really only happened in the last couple of years. Gross, dude. You're gonna wear that? Oh my god. That smells good. Ben brought one of his buddies Becky down here to, you know, for safety measures in case I drown or something. She might help me out. Stop! This is graduation day. Okay. Harder than it 
looks to go straight. Mert, you stay. Stay, buddy. The well, key is, when you're paddling, you always lean downstream. Lean upstream, it'll tip you over. Downstream, and so I caught my edge and tipped under. And then I was underneath, I forgot all about rolling. And I was like, Oh no, so I better bail. I don't know, I guess I'm not a pro yet. Well, I think I found a potential. What'd you say? It was like 800? 995. Nothing's better than rocking a big boat. Mm -hmm. Gotta pick up Carly and Mike. We're gonna look for some alien specimen, baby. Ah All the ladies be coming after us. All the ladies. Woo! About 8.30, between 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the evening, we were the only ones here. And we were just sitting about in the center of the bar, just talking. And a beam of light came through that door. Wow. You know, the hair on your neck kind of stand up and you yeah, look around. Yeah, someone is staring at you. A presence, an energy of some kind. And my wife said, well, you know, if, uh, make yourself at home if you want something to eat or drink. And she said, oh, hell, if you can come through a steel-clad door, you could open a beer or get in my refrigerator. You know, help yourself. I don't put this stuff. You know? Nah. Carly. I don't know. I feel like certain people that we talk to, I definitely think they've got a good handle on it, and the other ones, it's just, sometimes it's just so extreme. It's like, what planet are you from? Uh, I'm an astronomer. I, I'm working on a book on astronomy. One evening, a little after dark, a brightly lighted UFO about the size of a house descended and landed in the pasture about a quarter mile below the, uh, the house. Your wife saw this? Yeah. Some little guys got out. They were child size. Look to be fairly thin. They seem to be bending over and picking up soil or plant samples. While they were outside the craft on the ground, she pulled out a 30 30 rifle and fired three single shots in the air. And these guys did not respond. They didn't look up. It's like they didn't have ears. I, I'm doing an ongoing search uh, in Roswell at, at the area of the 1947 crash. We're going there on Friday. Roswell, you gotta go there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Camp out here? Just, I want to camp out right here. I want to see some stuff. I want to see some stuff. <laughs> 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 
Basically what he's saying is, if you wouldn't have kicked in that windshield, we'd be still driving a 71 Impala right now through the desert on our way to visit some aliens. Yeah, we're pretty much stuck out here. We're finished. Well, you, you guys sound like you're blaming it on me. Yeah, well, you the one who picked the 71 Impala, buddy. This is your angel. But this is your girl. Check it out, though. This is done. nice, man. Well, back in 1947, I got a call from Colonel William H. Blanchard, who was the base commander. I was called to his office, and he said, I want you to put out a press release. We have in our possession a flying saucer. Major Marcel is flying it to uh, Fort Worth to turn it over to General Ramey. Are you a believer? I believe that something crashed here. What it was, I don't know. I asked Colonel Blanchard, can I see it? His answer to me was just a plain old, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> What's the craziest story that someone's told you? Probably the worst one was, I had sex with an alien. <laughs> oh no. <laughs>
yesterday was just a practice for us. Now, today we got the real thing. We'll be doing a lot better. We're here in Laguna Beach right now, and this place is, is probably the mecca of skimboarding. You can get some of the best waves, you'll find some of the best skimboarders in the world. Is it mainly just a coastal sport, or who does it, where do they do it? I've seen kids do it in the, the Mojave Desert, in, in the rivers up there. Um, I've seen kids on, on wood skimboards going down grass hills. My buddy had a little round board. We took it down to the local golf course when it rained, and we threw it out there, and we started skimming the golf courses all the time. You guys have your own type of riding style? I'm more of an old school rider. I come from a, a, a time when we used to ride waves mainly, not as many tricks. As I try to mix the power element of skimboarding, which is going out and hitting the waves and doing the front side turns and the back side turns. And then uh, once I'm riding the wave, I'll try to throw in a trick. And usually those tricks are kind of like a shove it maneuver. Let's say we go do this. All right, let's go. Let's go, y'all. So what we want to do is we want to see the board and I want you to jump on with both feet. Slide down, bend your knees. When you're running, you're going to just drop it and jump on it. We don't do this in Georgia, guys. I'm ready to get out there and show you what I'm made of. We're now going into the water, you guys. The area to the right right here has some rocks. We'll stay away from that. What we're going to try to do is skim over into this area. The masters, yeah. The masters, yeah. Sit on a bench, paint and pass sides. Watch the sunset, here comes the night. No one said, come and tell it through to you. <laughs> it didn't taste too good either. My honest opinion is that we have three prodigies and probably all battling each other for a world championship. I'm taking off the wax that the that uh, the girls put on the wrong side of the board. We're in Sundance, Utah, with four brand wraps ready to compete to host the next show next week with Dangerous Dan, one of the best downhill mountain bikers in the world. K2 full suspension bike, high performance machine. I'm ready to flow, I'm ready to go, and I'm ready to show. Our mountain up here, between the base and the summit, you've got a thousand feet elevation. Girls will be okay up there? I mean, yeah, the girls will be fine. <laughs> you guys are the ones I'm worried about. And we're off! We're off! Here we go! Alright, here's the deal. We're gonna get you guys' feet wet a little bit by taking a little practice run. We're gonna start off at Scott's Pond here. We're gonna wing around, come down the hill through here, get to this switch back. You guys ready? You guys pumped for this? Let's go. Right. Let's go. Let's go.
how's it feel to eat it for the first one out of everybody? It got dirt on my teeth, eh? It's pretty hardcore. Took a digger, got right back up. You may have got me in the practice run there, but I'm going to get you in the, no. in the championship. Top speed the whole way down. That's all, all right. it's about. Well, I'll, I'll, me like in Vancouver. Said, me in Vancouver. Like I said, I'll see you I'll see you on the other side of the border. Mike, you know what would really help if I had a head start? Is that a possibility here? So you ultimately decide to get to go to Vancouver, right? Yes, I guess, I guess you could put it that way. So do you take bribes? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> All right, it's race time, boys. So you're up first, buddy. All right, let's go. All right. Man. All right, so Damien just took a little bit of a spill. <laughs> he hit it pretty hard. I think the bike's pretty down low. Dude, that bike's so All right, Damien, you're sitting at about 3:37:59. Uh, not exactly the greatest time. Emily, what's your strategy? All I'm focused on right now is just taking it through the straightaways and leaning the turns enough that I don't fall. Three sixteen. You beat you beat Damien. I mean. All right. Time for that. <laughs> Which is uh sad. All right, Lise. Here we go. Five, four, three, two. How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? It's so good to be done. All right, all right, here we go. You ready? Five, four, three, two. Oh, yeah. The 133, bro. Yeah. You're going to Vancouver. Sweet. Thank Congratulations. You. All right, high five on that one. Vancouver, BC, here I come. Dangerous Dan. Let's do it. I'm really supposed to be doing this because uh, only certain people are allowed to have keys to the gate and I'm not really one of them. Beautifully handcrafted Ellsworth bicycle. So uh, Ari, I heard you had to win a contest to get up here. I actually raced three other brand reps in Sundance, Utah. I beat them all. Kick have your you, ass? Yeah. yeah. I don't. Have you kicked my butt? <laughs> this is a very high-end bicycle. Ellsworth uh, Dare. It's a very, quite expensive machine. Probably runs about five, five, five grand U.S. I would say. So once you see what these things uh, are, you know, put through as far as you know, dropping off 15, 20 foot drops and uh, you know, going downhill at uh, extremely high velocities. It's worth it to save yeah, your body. Exactly. Yeah. I put these things to the test. That's one of my jobs with uh, Ellsworth bicycles is to. Uh, test their machinery and make sure it holds up because if it can hold up with what I do then uh, then generally speaking it'll hold up for the anyone for the, yeah anyone yeah the way Dan gets on the trail something I'm scared to even almost just jump up on my feet sorry why don't you give it a try yeah <laughs> Maybe by the end so, of the day the main thing when you're when you're biking any sort of trail especially North Shore is being being able to be calm and uh, composed to such an extent that you can feather your brakes. Because if you can feather your brakes, then you just coast down the trail nice and smoothly. You're not all skidding and swerving all over the place. Blueberries. Mm, wild blueberries. Mm. I understand why the bears like them, eh? I think we're going somewhere. We're on to something good here. Out of mind. Out of this is the easier trail. <laughs> I think we're going somewhere.
Now we're going to cut over to my trail. About to enter the circus. Yeah, the flying circus that is. And uh, yeah, this is uh, where things kind of step up. Uh, not just one level, but like a few levels. Guys, check this out. This is handmade by Dangerous Dan. Some of the craziest trails I've ever seen in my life. This was a blowdown. In other words, the storms around here blew down these trees uh, two years ago. I won't even walk down this. This is the epitomizer, and there is no room for error. And I'll say, hey, get off my back. All in favor, all in favor, say. No. We like the flavor. We like the flavor. This is a little trail a friend of mine built called Air Supply. Ready? They're using natural elements to build all these trails. If there's a log in the way, they build the trail right over it, or they use it in it. It's amazing how it just fits right into the scenery. Everything just flows all through the woods. It, it looks like it almost belongs here. Check this out. This car's probably been here for 50 or 60 years. And look at this, they use the car door as part of their teeter-totter to weight it down. See that? That's the weight on the back. So creative. Ari, I've uh, shown you some of the more gnarly cutting edge stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up and uh, ride a trail which uh, is catered to, you know, getting to this point. Double Black Diamond, I'm going to give it a shot. Can't even get ten feet. I don't feel too proud about that, but it was double black diamond. Uh, hang on, Dan. I'm gonna go check and see if I can drop this. That doesn't look that bad. Right. Jump it. Yeah. Jump it and be aggressive about it. Don't be hesitant about it. Don't land like this. Land like this. Land with your nose down. And yeah, don't worry just too much about that rock. All or nothing. Go big or go home. Woo! Nice roll. Nice <laughs> oh, Woo! Good one, man. Good thing he's a solid boy, eh? Two good things to point. One is Ari had a helmet on, and two that he's physically fit and obviously athletic, so he's able to roll. recover from such a yeah. bonehead move like that. Actually, that was a superb example of how to wipe out. Do you see how he rolled? It was perfect. He saw himself going down. He's like, oh my god! I'm All right, that's roll. enough. I've okay, seen so they wanted me to do the 12, uh, 15 foot drop. I can't even make a four. Well, the it was a different kind of drop, though, right? That one's actually harder. Technically harder. Well, that makes me feel a little better. I think we're going somewhere. We're on to something good here. Out of mind, out of state. Trying to kick my head on straight. I think we're going somewhere. We're on to something good here. How beautiful is this? We're in Boulder, Colorado. For the first ever East versus West Abercrombie football match, we've got guys from all over the place, all over the East, all over the West. I don't really know what to expect, but I think I'm going to go with the West. What about you, Nas? For now, I'm going with the East, but it's too early to yeah. tell, so we should go check it yeah. out. Yeah, we have a definite problem on the field. <laughs> Elks are out last night doing their thing. All right, Dusty, as the ANF TV seasoned veteran, I'm nominating you to clean up all the elk crap that's on the field. Here's your pooper scooper. You ready to go? It's a privilege, thank you. How do you think it's going to affect the game today? It's going to be a lot of slipping and sliding out yeah, there. Yeah, totally. Okay, West team. Oh. <laughs> Time to get down to business. This is what you're going to do. Pick a team captain first, and then you need to sign the rest of the positions and start practicing. One, two, three, West! What I need is we oh. One, two, three, East! East. Me and Mike will run some defense and then you guys are blocking and have Matt and Mike do their cross pattern and see if it works.
right, boys, it's game time, and we're going to read off the rules. There's two 20-minute halves, two timeouts per half, and we're going to go by seven. Okay, Wes, do you want heads or tails? Heads. Tails. So, East, do you want to kick or receive? We're going to receive. All right, we go. Yeah. 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 You guys feel in the altitude? Oh yeah, yeah I do. Do. Ready? do this! Set! Go! Drop ruggedy roll! Two receivers line up on the same yeah. side. I don't care. Okay. Line up on this opposite side. They're used to seeing the bright orange colors of their board shorts. And uh, the blue threw them off. Run! Yeah, yeah! 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 Yeah, your hands. The altitude. It's game time. We're all pretty excited right now, but I'm still gonna vote for the West. Did you know? It's on my sway right off the bat. Right Smoke. Oh, so quick, I, I can't remember what happened. Oh, my God. 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 Oh,
I'm not denying the brunette. So I was a little nervous, but not too bad. I was Whatever. Laughing up there. You were not <laughs> laughing. It's kind of tough, but with these blue gems right here, something's going down. That's all I have to say.